Hey, it's some old guy quoting again today, and you know, my wife uh, with her store up in Isanti has been dinging me to uh, make some uh, cribbage boards. She says people are coming in and asking for cribbage boards, and I thought, hey, that'd be something I can make, but you know, I've been putting it off until the new machine is up and running. So uh, I'm not much of a cribbage player. In fact, I'm not a cribbage player, so if anybody sees any mistakes on here, please let me know. <laughs> anyway, the the... Uh, tracks around the outside and then the inside area is going to be recessed uh, by maybe about three millimeters and then I was going to laser engrave the train uh, graphic and uh, the railroad crossing uh, text why railroad crossing I have no idea just first thing I could come up with but um, <clears throat> the train graphic came from Etsy apparently out there on Etsy.com you can actually buy DXF files the people have supposedly uh, made themselves and not just copied from somebody else and charge you for them hopefully <laughs> but anyway there, there's a lot of interesting stuff out there and a lot of interesting CNC files and uh, much of it is inexpensive and uh, some of it says that it's okay to use for commercial use so just read carefully and uh, take a look at that in any case here we are um, Here's my first attempt. Well, okay, actually, it's my third attempt to get this far. Um, but as you can see, the laser engraving is way too wide and bold, and it's uh, the um, um, cow catcher in front is uh, melding into one black piece of, you know, it's just too much. It's too much engraving. And what I was doing here with ESTL cam was I was doing a car function. And I was trying to carve just a, a millimeter in or something like that on the inside of everything. Um, and <clears throat> it was obviously too much. So this took me down the rabbit hole as to what are the correct settings in ESTL cam to carve a, a thin region around the inside of a shape. And you can see from this diagram here that um, the upper line is uh, inside, the bottom line is outside. The first three of uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and one millimeter certainly look awful lot alike. And you would think there would be a difference there. So I'm not sure what the problem was. So here I ran another test. I'm not sure what I varied on this one, but it was some other attempt to get things to uh, come out a little thinner for me. It looks a little better on that 0 0.1 millimeter, I think, maybe. Or maybe it's pretty much like all the others. Well, at this point, I remembered reading something out on V1 Engineering on the forum here, and here I found it again. It's the laser engraver not really, laser engraving not really getting great results, and it's 11 pages long. But toward the end of it down there, they basically summarize that, uh, that some of these problems are resolved by commenting out uh, some lines in marlin.cpp. Specifically, it was these four lines highlighted in yellow that you need to comment out. And I did that and uploaded, and it seemed like it made a difference. It actually uh, caused the uh, um, carvings that I thought should be thinner to be thinner. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. Here you can see the difference that change made uh, comparing the, the top row up there is the uh, carve before the change and the bottom one is the carve after the change. You can see that the 0 0.1, 0 0.25 are now really narrow like they really should be. <laughs> so there's one improvement. However, you can still see there's a problem on these guys. If you take a look at the lettering, there's like dark marks on certain areas. So I went ahead and did uh, some carving uh, as the letters were being carved, I figured I'd uh, experiment with that and uh, see what I could find. So in this job I did uh, uh, engrave on the line left and right and I used different sizes of laser. I told, I told ESTL cam was all the way up to a 2 millimeter laser there. And this is where I first started noticing this problem. You see these little dots on the bottom of the circles uh, culminating on the one on the right where you, it's very easy to see them. Uh, that indicated that the laser was stopping at those points or pausing too long. And uh, I went back and looked at my code and somehow I thought I had increased the uh, 
number of commands that were being sent to the um, uh, Marlin to two at a time, you know, a maximum of two outstanding commands, but I hadn't. Uh, apparently I had fat fingered that one somehow. So I went ahead and increased it to two, and actually I jumped right up to three, and it didn't work at all. It, it hung. So apparently you can only send two commands <laughs> outstanding to Marlin at a time. And once I did adjust it to two uh, and get it working that way, it uh, solved those little spots. However, that wasn't the end of the problems here. As you can see on this screen here, uh, where I finally tried to do just a regular engraved center on a piece of pine, that uh, things are not carved evenly. Uh, I had my laser set to 22, uh, 20 millimeters per second, and when I actually physically watch it, it you could see that all these dark areas uh, where there's curves would uh, go really slowly and then the larger areas more straighter lines would would go fast like at 20 millimeters per second but every time there was a little squiggly or something it would uh, slow down super slow so I remember reading on uh, V1 engineering um, um, forum that other people were having problems similar to this related to the 2.0 bug fix version so apparently that initial problem fix there didn't solve this part of the problem so I tried a couple of different things you know one of the solutions I suggested was just to slow your speed down so that your fastest speed matched the slowest speeds in there effectively and then you'll get an even burn but uh, I got down to like two or three millimeters before th uh, per second before things looked even and I really didn't want to run that slow so I thought about looking at a couple of other things. So I figured I'd create myself a test case that we could compare uh, you know, back to um, and see if we make any changes. So I just started uh, right, uh, engraving, not, yeah, engraving out uh, the, the lettering on the bottom of the thing. This is part of the outside of the R uh, for railroad. And you can see right down in here where uh, the corners are sharp that it seems like the laser slows down significantly uh, particularly down in uh, this area here it just seems like it just slows down and then on the uh, larger out back side of the R it speeds up really good so um, let's try to fix that. So my first thought does it have to do with curves or straight lines or, or what is the issue here um, so I went ahead and in ESTL cam I disabled uh, the use of uh, G2, G3, you know, uh, allowing it to make curves. So now it had to make everything with straight lines and man that had a big effect. It just ground to a basic halt. Very, very slow. So that's not it. So I remember a long time ago that there was some issue with an earlier version of Marlin where uh, the... Um, LCD display was taking up too much time so I went ahead and I disabled the LCD display and uh, I also tried to make some adjustments in my controller code and you can see I entirely missed the target board with this one because of the bug I had introduced but nevertheless you can see that you know this has still got issues going on possibly even worse and I also remembered reading out there on uh, the forum someplace that uh, along with slowing things down, uh, Ryan suggested increasing the jerk uh, values. So I went hunting for those in configuration.h, and then I came across this uh, thing called junction deviation. And if junction deviation was enabled, the uh, jerk values apparently were disabled. So I commented out that first line that says define junction deviation and tried it again. And with this change, it, it seems like the issue is resolved. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, it sure looks better than it did before. So I went ahead and ran the entire uh, uh, graphic out there using Engrave and uh, came out uh, like this. And here we have the before on the left and the after on the right, and it's definitely different. Uh, the before had the darkened areas, you know, and the, the light areas where it ran faster. And uh, overall, the after is lighter overall, but it doesn't seem to have those burn marks. 
maybe a little bit here and there, but certainly certainly not enough to be distracting like it is on the left. So uh, I definitely need to slow my laser down or make multiple cuts to darken up that image for the for the final product. But I think we've made it past this problem. Let's see what comes up next. And last but not least, there's one more change I want to mention. I went ahead and made some buttons to go on the end of the long axis end stops to improve the reliability. Uh, there's a situation where, you know, if they're not perfectly aligned, sometimes the switch will miss. Or if uh, you home it uh, on the X axis with one Z, uh, one Z side up and one Z side down, and then you go ahead and uh, home Z axis, it can. Uh, uh, one of the switches can be off the edge of the bolt and then as they come into place by the z-axis homing can actually snap the little lever arm off so I wanted to solve that problem and uh, you know things have been running uh, very reliably since I've added these on I've uploaded those to Thingiverse in both the uh, 8 millimeter uh, socket uh, hex socket and hex cap versions but you can certainly see that it was just a simple matter of making a making a cylinder and then subtracting out whatever screw that you happen to use uh, uh, when you, if you download it from uh, a McMaster car on Fusion 360 just uh, you know subtract that out so anyway there it is for this time um, I'm gonna keep plugging away on that cribbage board and making adjustments so thanks for watching thanks for the 3,000 subscribers plus now it's amazing I uh, really appreciate it and uh, see you next time